Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ashwa Gishwagi. We will talk about infection control in hemodialysis unit. Element D1, sub-element 21, activities for auditing. D instead of documentation, SI instead of staff interview, O instead of observation, MR instead of medical record. The score, 0 or 1 or 2 or not applicable. Sub-element D1.1, there is written proce and procedure for infection control in hemodialysis unit. Review the policy and procedures for infection control in hemodialysis unit, which should be comprehensive. It covers all aspects of infection control in hemodialysis unit. Fully applicable, all elements of the policy can be applied and comply with the hospitals or units scopes of service including but not limited to. Number one, infection control precautions in dialysis unit. By hand hygiene, by recommended BPE, like gloves clean or sterile, gown clean or, and, or sterile, face shield, goggles, surgical mask or N95 respirators. By aseptic technique, example, insertions and handling of CBC and other vascular access, preparations of parenteral medications, use of multi-dose vials, environmental cleaning and disinfections, internal cleaning and disinfections of dialysis machines in between patients as bare manufacturer recommendations, or cleaning and disinfections of hemodialysis patients' environmental after each treatment sessions, or regular cleaning and disinfections of the water treatment system, distribution system, and dialysis machines, as per manufacturer's recommendations. By employee safety, staff immunizations as per employee clinic policy, exposures, and post exposures management. By waste management. Number two, handling dialysis patients with respiratory illness, COVID-19, or MERS-CoV, etc. Number three, preventions of blood-borne pathogen transmissions, serology protocols, and immunizations for dialysis patients. Number four, water treatment and required quality testing, like microbiological testing and chemical testing and water quality daily parameters. Other domains of policy and procedures based on scientific reference approved by MOH, like MOH guidelines for infections control, infections prevention and control hemodialysis unit, like CDC and EPIC and WHO, signed from authorized person, 
like owner of the policy or hospital or unit director or medical director concert department approved by IC committee and valid update within two to three years and when indicated sub element D1.2 the distance separating adjust dialysis chairs or bits is not less than 1.2 meters this determined by observation. Observe the dialysis stations and estimate the distance between the dialysis chairs or beds. Number one, sufficient space between dialysis stations to allow free movement of hemodialysis patient. Not less than 1.2 meters. Number two, observe staff and accessibility for an adequate cleaning. For example, dialysis machines are not close to each other. Number three, required items are arranged in, in orderly fashion, while unneeded items are uh, eliminated in order to ensure clear demarcations between two dialysis stations. Number four, observe if excess uh, length of tubes or hoses and wires are removed from the other are removed from the floor in order to ensure complete adequate spacing sub element d1.3 special room is available for central venous lines insertion and it is equipped with appropriate hand washing facility and require ppe determined by observation and staff interview Observe the room allocated for central venous lines insertion. Number one, physically separated room from other area in a way that ensure proper traffic control while insertion procedure is, is ongoing. Number two, available hand washing sink and alcohol-based hand drop dispenser in order to practice hand hygiene. Number three, required BBE like sterile gloves, sterile gowns, face shields, or goggles, surgical mask, and N95 respirators. Staff interview. Ask hemodialysis staff about the actual place used for insertions of central venous catheter within the dialysis unit. If the surface is provided with the dialysis unit, the answer should be in special room allocated for central venous catheter insertions only. But if this service is not provided with the dialysis unit, the answer should be the patient is transmitted to ICU or operation room and this is included in the department policy by document. Sub-element D1.4 Hand washing supply like sinks, soap, water, paper towels, antimicrobial soap are available in adequate number. One for every four chair or bed and easily accessible. De determine this sub, this sub, sub element by objective. Observe hand washing preparations in hemodialysis unit. Number one, at least one hand washing sink in each hemodialysis room or any physically separated area. Like to reach one to one ratio equal one for every chair or bits in single room. Number two, minimum acceptable ratio, one hand washing sink for every four chairs or bits in the unit that are designed as open areas without physical barrier one to four. Hand sink are conveniently located, like accessible or easy to be reached by the hemodialysis staff. Number four, hand washing sink are equipped with hot and cold water or plain and antimicrobial soap or towels. Sub element D1.5. Alcohol hand drop dispensers are available like one for every patient's chairs or beds. It determined by observations.
observe waterless hand hygiene preparations in hemodialysis unit. Number one minimum accepted ratio, one alcohol based hand drop dispensers for every chair or bed. Number two, each dialysis station must be equipped with either wall mounted alcohol hand drop dispenser or al alcohol hand drop bottle in order to ensure strict adherence to five moments of hand hygiene. Number three, alcohol based hand drop dispensers are conveniently located, like accessible and easy to be reached by the hemodiasis staff. Sub element D1.6. Appropriate PPE are available and used according to standard and or transmissions based precautions like gloves, uh, clean and or sterile, gowns clean or sterile, face shield or goggles, mask or N95 respirators. It determined by observation and staff interview. Observe the availability of the BBE at all dialysis areas or rooms. Like BBE should be available in adequate amount in each area. Number two, observe the specifications of available BBE. BBE should be of proper qualities and full film image approved specifications. Observe staff members while using available BBE. They should use BBE in isolation room and other dialysis areas properly, like as per transmission-based precautions and or infection control precautions required during hemodialysis seizures. Gloves are needed whenever carrying uh, for patients or touching the patient's equipment as exposure to blood and potentially contaminated items are routinely anticipated. Hemodiasis staff should wear fluid resistance gowns, face shield, uh, eyewear, and ma mask to protect themselves and prevent soiling of clothing during initiation and termination of the dialysis seizures, insertions of dialysis catheter, manipulations of patient's accesses at any time, cleaning of the dialysis station. During audit visit, keep observing practice of hemodiasis unit. Stop if they are doving, uh, doving the BBE before leaving the dialysis station. You may not take some staff. During audit visit, keep observing practice of hemodiasis unit staff if they are doving the BBE before leaving the dialysis station. You may not take some staff mo moving between stations with set of PPE or sitting at nursing station. This practice must be strictly prohibited. Ask hemodiasis staff members like two or three healthcare workers of different job categories these questions. How to properly wear BBE and what is the correct sequence? How to safely remove BBE and what is the proper sequence? about their big cells lessons uh, or fit tested date knowledge about their fit knowledge about their fitted in 95 size sub element d1.7 patients and staff members wear masks for all central venous catheter access connections we evaluated this sub-element by observation and staff interview. Observe the ability of the supplies required for applying precautions during central venous catheter access connections. For example, PPE, like gloves, gown, mask, face shields or goggles, supply sterile drops, like sterile dressing, antiseptics, like chloroxidine hydroconate with alcohol less than a 0.5 percentage, uh, more than sorry, more than 0.5 percentage, and providing iodine. 
observed staff members while connecting the patients to blood lines and assess if all elements of central venous catheter connection sponsors are applied. Number three, observe if surgical mask is provided to the patient during all connecting procedure. For successful observation, it's advisable to plan your visit to be during initiation or terminal of the decisions, like connection or termination time. Ask a modest staff member how to properly handle central venous catheter during connections of patients to dialysis machines and what are required precautions, like, uh, uh, like hand hygiene and BPE supplies technique, etc. Ask healthcare workers who are involved in handling central venous catheter connections about date of last training of educations received about prepare infection control measures for central venous catheter connections and disconnections, date of competency assessment on CDC guidelines as regard in infection control measures for central venous catheter selections, insertions, maintenance, decreasing, change connections and disconnections. Sub element D1.8 Mobile common medications cart or trays are strictly prohibited. It determined by observation and staff interview. Third, check if there is any mobile carts or common trays used within the hemodiasis unit to prepare and or distribute medications and supplies between patients. Mobile cards and common trays shouldn't be used to prepare or distribute medications and supplies. For successful observations, it is advisable to plan your visits to be during initiations or terminations of the decisions. Ask hemodiasis staff members like these questions. How are they preparing and or distributing supplies or medications between patients? Other questions give specific tasks to any hemodialysis unit staff about transportations of medications to dialysis stations and assesses if they are using separate medication tray for each patient or common for multiple patients. Sub-element D1.9 Separate clean area is available and maintained for preparations of medications. It determined by observation and staff interview. Check the availability of dedicated medications preparation area, which is physically separated from patient's treatment area. Also observe if any patient requires medications during dialysis sessions and where and how the, resp the responsible nurse is preparing this treatment. For successful observations, it is advisable to plan your visits to be during initiations of or termination of the session. Ask hemodialysis staff members where and how are they preparing medication. Like multi dust bias and ointment for dressing change. Observe the attitude of staff members toward unused supplies and single-use medications that are taken to patients' dialysis station. Supplies and single-use medications are brought to, be to patient station only when needed. After terminations of dialysis sessions, Number one, all remaining single-use items are discarded, even unused, ones with intact original wrap. Number two, all reusable items are sent for reprocessing, even unused, one with intact original wrap. Ask hemodialysis staff members Instead of direct questions, indirect ones or, or scenarios are advisable. 
like what to, what to do with extra supplies or single-use medications that are taken to patients' dialysis stations without being used during dialysis seasons. Or ask like how you safely handle or disinfect unused supplies and medications that are taken to patients' station which are not used during dialysis seizures before being used for other patients. Or ask in emergency, in emergency stations what are the rules that should be considered before returning unused supplies or medications that are taken to patients' dialysis stations to, be to, to the central preparations area. Element D1.11. Patient care equipment such as blood pressure cuffs, stethoscopes, or scissors and thermometers are located to single a patient during the whole seizures and are disposed, if single use, or cleaned and disinfected, if reusable, at the end of each patient treatment seizures. It determines this sub element by observations and staff interview. Observe the practice of, him, of healthcare workers toward patient's care equipment such as blood pressure cuffs, stethoscopes, scissors, and thermometer. These items are allocated to single patient during the whole seasons or not. Other questions, single-use items are disposed at the end of each patient's dialysis decisions or not. Other questions, reusable items are reprocessed at the end of each patient's dialysis decisions or not. Ask hemodialysis staff members Instead of direct questions, indirect ones or scenario are advisable. For example, how do you safely handle or disinfect single-use patient's care equipment such as disposable stethoscope or after being used during their decisions and before being used for another patient? Other questions in emergency situations, what are the precautions to be followed before using shared reusable items such as blood pressure cuff and scissors for more than one patient during the same shift. Sub-element D1.12. Later rules are strictly flow followed for the process of internal cleaning and disinfections of dialysis machines in between patients, as per manufacturer's recommendations. This is determined by document uh, uh, and observations and staff interview. Review the following documents. Documents that describe the process of internal cleaning and disinfections of dialysis machines. Appropriate evidence of applications, whether hard copy or electronic record of the machines. And check whether the applied process incompletable with manufacturer recommendation on and approved department policy. Evidence should specify the method of disinfection, temperature, used chemicals, and require connections and time as bare hemodesis approved policy. Observe the process of internal cleaning and disinfections of dialysis machines. Internal cleaning and disinfections of dialysis machines is performed as per manufacturer's recommendations and approved department policy. Method of disinfections, whether thermal or chemical, temperature use chemicals and required connections and times. Ask nursing staff members about the process of internal cleaning and disinfections of dialysis machines, like method of disinfections, temperatures and used chemicals and required connections and times, Proper contact times, comprehensive to cover all environmental surfaces, whether frequently touched by healthcare worker or in contact with the patient.
sub-element D1.13. Cleaning and disinfections of hemodialysis patients' environment is performed after each treatment seizures with MOH approved disinfectant. It determines by document and observation and staff interview. Review the following documents. Documents that demonstrate the process of cleaning and disinfections of hemodiasis patients' environment after each treatment seizures. And check whether the applied process is compatible with manufacturer's recommendations and approved units policy. The checklist should be practiced and cover all environment surface in the hemodiasis station. Also, it should include responsible staff. The process of cleaning and disinfections of hemodialysis patients' environment. Cleaning and disinfections of hemodialysis patients' environment as per the unit policy. Frequency after each shift and at the end of the day. Responsible staff and use of PPE. Nursing staff and housekeeping staff or BPE, clean gloves, clean gowns, surgical masks, and space sheets or goggles. Supplies checks the availability of supplies, example, approved chemical and disinfectant, non lighting wipes, spray bottle, and or buckets, etc. The process of cleaning and disinfections of hemodialysis patients' environment. The disinfections method should be with no patient's presence, with approved disinfectant and prepared contact time. From up, downward, and from less solid to the more solid. Comprehensive to cover all environmental surface. Surfaces frequently touched by healthcare workers and surface in contact with the patient. Check the quality of the hemodialysis activities. Observe the presence of dust soil stickers that demonate defective cleaning and disinfections of patients' environment after terminations of hemodialysis seizures. For successful observations, it's advisable to plan your visits to be during terminations of dialysis seizures. Ask nursing staff and housekeeping staff members about the process of cleaning and disinfections of hemodialysis patients' environment. Frequently after each shift and at the end of the day, responsibilities and use PPE, nursing staff responsibilities and housekeeping staff responsibilities or clean gloves, clean gown, surgical mask, and face shield goggles. For supply, for example, chemicals and disinfectant, non lighting wipes, spray bottle and buckets. Procedures with no patient presence with approved disinfectant and repair contact time. Comprehensive to cover all environmental surface with frequently touched by healthcare worker or in the contact with the patient. D114. Cleaning and disinfections of the water treatment and distribution system is performed at least once weekly. Complete dialysis system is considered during the disinfection procedures. It determines by documentations and staff interview. Review the following documents. Documents evidence of the process of cleaning and disinfections of the washer treatment components and distribution systems and of dialysis machines. And check if the applied process is compatible within, with manufacturer's recommendations and approved department policy or not. The evidence should 
specify frequency of dis disinfections, method of dif disinfections, temperatures, used chemicals, and required connections, and time as per approved unit policy. Ask nursing staff members about the process of internal cleaning and disinfections of dialysis machines, frequency of disinfections, method of disinfections, temperature used chemicals, and required connections and time. The knowledge should be compatible with unit policy and actual practice. Also ask staff responsible for water treatment and distribution systems about the protocol for cleaning and disinfections of water treatment and distribution systems. Frequency of disinfections, method of disinfections, temperatures, use chemicals and requires connections and time. Their knowledge should be compatible with unit policy and actual practice. Element D1.15 Quantitative microbiological testing for water and dialysis is conducted at least monthly, and if standards are exist, testing is done weekly until meeting standards. It determined by document and staff interview. Element D1.16 Quantitative endotoxin testing for water and dialysis. Dialysis is performed at least once per month, and if not up to the standards, testing is repeated weekly until the problem is resolved. Determined by document and staff interview. Review the following documents. Documents evidence for microbiological and detoxin testing for water and dialysis. Review, review microbiological testing reports and the dates of these reports. Review and detoxin testing reports and dates of these reports. Review the schedule for water and the research sampling, including sequence of hemodiasis machines testing. Review the following documents. Report should do demonstrate quantitative results. Report should be reviewed and signed by personal responsibilities for water treatment systems and maintenance departments and public health personnel. Review the approved policy for microbiological and endotoxin testing, including the required corrective interventions if results are out of limits. Review the, dedicate, the dedicated from for corrective interventions, if results are above the maximum acceptable levels, these forms should be reviewed and signed by personnel responsible for water treatment systems and maintenance of department and public health personnel. Ask hemodialysis staff in charge about microbiological and induction testing for water and dialysis. For example, ask about the approved frequency of testing and ask about the result of microbiological and endotoxin testing, testing of water and assist if they are complete and well organized. Also ask about the acceptable limits for a bacteria colony count and endotoxin levels with corrective interventions. Also ask hemodialysis unit head about any drainage result ever experienced in the past and check the corrective actions in the order to ensure effective implementations. Routine testing of water should be done with corrective actions done by public health, infections control should monitor the results of water monthly only and all the results shall be barely documented and more available for inspections. Sub-element D117. The results of microbiological and endotoxin testing of water are available 
determined by observation and staff interview. Review the following documents. Documented evidence of reviewing microbiological and endotoxin testing results by responsible persons. Review last few microbiological testing reports for signatures. Review last few endotoxin testing reports for signatures. Microbiological and endotoxin testing reports should be reviewed and signed by personnel responsible for water treatment systems and maintenance, maintenance departments and public health personnel. Ask hemodialysis nurse in charge or responsible nephrologists about microbiological and endotoxin testing for water and dialysates, approved frequency of testing, and interpretations of results, and corrective interventions when levels are borderlines or unsatisfactory. Their knowledge should be compatible with MOH guidelines, approved units policy, and the actual practice. Sub-element D1.18. The patient is tested for hepatitis B virus markers on admission with vaccination of susceptible 1. Patients with negative results are periodically retested with Brombit review of results. Determined by documentation and medical record. Sub-element D1.19, patient is tested for hepatitis C markers on admissions like ALT and anti-HCV ELISA, anti-HCV by ELISA. Patients with negative results are periodically retested with Brombert review of results. It determined by documentations and medical record. Sub-element D120. Previously, hepatitis C was the patient who was treated with direct antiviral agent and achieved sustained virologic res response, is tested for HCV RNA by BCR semi-annually to detect relapse. Determined by document and medical record. Sub-element D1.21, only patients with risk factors for HIV infections are tested for markers of HIV infections, determined by documentations and medical record. Review the following documents. Documents for serological testing of dialysis patients on admissions and periodically with vaccinations of susceptible ones. Review record for surgical testing of dialysis patients for hepatitis B, C, HIV. Review special record for vaccinations against hepatitis B, susceptible unvaccinated patients, susceptible patients on vaccinations, vaccine resp responder, vaccine non-responder. List of previously hepatitis C was the patients who was treated with direct antiviral, antiviral agents and sus sustained virologic, virologic response, list of patients with risk factors for HIV infections, zero conversions rate for hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Randomly review medical record of patients. Medical record of hepatitis B susceptible patients to check routine monthly testing of hepatitis B antigen. Medical record of hepatitis B immune patients to check routine testing of anti hepatitis B annually. Medical record of hepatitis C negative patients to check routine testing of ALT and anti HCV by ELISA. 
medical record of previously hepatitis C positive patients who are treated and achieved sustained virologic response anti HCV positive to check routine testing of hepatitis C RNA PCR every six months. Medical record of patients with risk factor for HIV infections to check testing markers of HIV infection. Sub-element D122. Hepatitis B positive patients are strictly segregated in separate room, treated by dedicated staff during dialysis sessions, using designated machine, equipments, instruments, supplies, and medications which are used only for them, and determined by documentations, observations, and staff interview. Review the nursing staff duty roster to ensure that number of nursing staff is compatible with number of hemod hemodiasis patients and their dis distributions on unit rooms. A dedicated nursing staff is only assigned for hepatitis B positive hemodiasis patients and strictly not handling any hepatitis negative patients outside hepatitis positive patient room during dialysis sessions. Observe rooms for hepatitis B positive patients to ensure that they are strictly segregated. Number one, physically separate rooms with accessible hand washing facilities within, within the rooms. Number two, dedicated hemodialysis machines. Number three, designated patient care equipment. Number four, separate storage for medications, instruments, supplies, and consumables. Example, definite stores or cabinets away from patients soon. Number five, five assigned nursing staff available within the rooms during the current shift and whether it is match matching the nursing staff rosters or not. Number six, nursing staff properly use PPE according to infection control precautions, which is recommended for all dialysis patients. Ask nursing staff about number one, current nursing staff rosters of the unit. Number two, placement of hepatitis B positive hemodiasis patients. Number three, equipment used for hepatitis B positive hemodiasis patients. Number four, hemodiasis machines used for hepatitis B positive hemodiasis patients. Number five, store for medications, instruments, supplies, and consumables used for hepatitis B positive hemodiasis patients. The knowledge should be compatible with MOH guidelines, approved units, policy, and the actual practice.